Hey there. Uh, I'm gonna work on this um, little web app a bit more tonight. So, let's see. Last time I worked on this, then uh, we got to the configure page, and the configure page of this web app, which is going to log your water intake, then we got about to here, where we have this input and using binding, um, and then out here, then when it changes, then we uh, set it. So um, I'm going to get this going here. And then, uh, and then we'll see what we want to do next. Kind of avoiding the much styling stuff for now. Uh, I'd like to just kind of get it functioning and then when it's functioning then uh, oops. once it's functioning then um, then pretty it up a bit. So for now go here. Just clear that out. Expected. Interesting. Requests bundle.js. <clears throat> turns HTML. This is new to me. Oh, no. Alright. Yeah, that's just startup issues. That's a new one for me, I guess. So anyway, so we got the dashboard, the history, and then this configure and configure we can change it and hit save and if we reload or you know, go somewhere else, it'll show up there. So before we get uh, too much farther here, then I do think that we should make this have a some way that indicates that it's actually saving. So inside here probably, then when this is emitted, then we would like to set, you know, something like set the uh, saving to true, and then wait for this, and then afterward set it to false, and then over here, then, you know, maybe we would have probably have like a field set probably since this isn't a form and then disabled can be you know saving daily of course how about that so then in here, we'll have this, and now 
like I've said before, I'm really used to Svelte 1 still, and I am kind of new to um, Svelte 3 syntax. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and figure out how we set things. So, okay. So we would say DOM API set true. And then set it to false. Now, the problem that we'll have here, of course, is so this is synchronous, it'll set it, and then it will wait. Uh, some async operation, and then it will set it. Now, ideally, this is going to be pretty fast, and so in the, I think I saw. Okay, so what that will do is saving data goal right. Uh, I have to say. Um, so, I don't even know if you'll be able to see when you hit the save button that this changes. And also, um, the other thing that you would probably want is you'd want the save button disabled if this value hasn't changed. So one thing that we could do here is we could say, so you could put, for example, like an on change event here. So when this input changes, we could do something. It's also like bound, so Maybe we can think of some way to do there. I'm thinking on change is probably the thing to do. And so what we want to do there, uh, you can put your logic out here if you want. And I think we might want to put it out here. So here we're probably going to say uh, we'll need the original. So we can get the original value here and we can pass it into this activate function. Um, another way might be Let's see. So as soon as you change the daily goal, then it's going to change here. So another way that we could do it is we could say something like so we'd say something like this and then we'd say initial daily goal is daily goal. And then we probably don't need this to be emitted. So inside here, we can say this here, and we can say this is going to be disabled if it's in the middle of saving, or if the daily goal 
is not the same as the initial. So if we got that right, which, oops, let me drop this on change. We don't even have to uh, watch for a change. And so this button should be disabled. Maybe there's something in the Svelte docs. <clears throat> Disabled. Well, I mean, we could just disable the save button. That might make more sense anyway. Yeah, I think that probably makes more sense in here. Because you don't want to disable the input field, of course. That's silly. So then this save button is not disabled. And why is that? course, if they're the same. Uh, so then, now it's disabled. And if we change it, then it is not disabled. And then, like I said, when you hit save, then it's going to disable it, but it's going to be so fast that you won't even notice. And that's bad user interface. So what I want to do here we actually want to also do this, like so. So then, for example, now we hit save and now it's disabled again. So what we want to do is we really want to have some minimum delay. So this here should await and maybe it'd be, you know, a second or, you know, click it. I guess maybe this isn't so bad. Hit save. And now it disables it. So it'd be nice to have some uh, indicator that shows that it did save, but this disabled is not too bad actually. So I think we'll just leave it there for now. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay with this. I can be made better at some point in the future. That's not bad. So what I would like to skip to next is, uh, let's see here. Actually, yeah, okay, so what do we want to do next? Let's figure out, let's figure out containers, sure, okay. So, like here, we've got these get and set. So what we're going to have in this container is we're going to have something like get containers, container, let's say container list. That's probably better. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll, we'll just start there. So we'll say here probably containers wait get container list and then in here we'll make our get container list and so Mm. 
list, and if it doesn't exist, then we'll return an empty array. And actually, let's just go ahead and say, what should this look like? Mm. So probably the container, let's have a look here. We'll go, oh yeah, a little notes, great. So it's a list of containers and so we'll probably have something like uh, each, oh, that doesn't seem right. That is right, okay. Each expression has a name. And it's key. So each container list has container. And then container.id. So let's just let's actually let's just start like this. So we'll say Volume. No. Oops. Volume. Okay. And then, uh, and then we've got a name. This should probably go into a different order. And then, uh, what I really want for each container is a picture. And I think let me say each I'll probably put the name up here. So that tells me that we'll have an ID container one and then we'll have a name. My, so I have a mason jar that I drink out of. And then we'll have a volume. And um, I feel like this is going to come back and bite me. But I probably want like a, a volume and then like a volume type. No, we'll just say, we'll just leave it at volume for now. So it's 24. It's ounces. At some point, I might want to make that a little better. And then for now, that might be like a, a URL or something. So we'll figure that out. So in here, in the container list, I'm just going to have it return this example container and then it should console error get container list is not defined container list oh sorry it hasn't added that to the bundle Feel like I'm doing it the same. Get container list is not defined. I wonder if it's not. Hey, 
picking it up here. It's the new file. I'm going to restart this and see uh, this build process. I'm not 100% sure on it. Uh, there's some little bits that bother me a bit. I don't like adding new files and stuff sometimes doesn't work correctly. We'll see here. Oh yeah, we definitely need to add this here. Export it container list. Okay. I'm guessing this will work now since it didn't complain this time. Yeah, okay. So so in configure I want the container list to show up here. And so this configure has the UI view embedded and it's at app.configure. The container is going to be app. Uh, configure dot container. <clears throat> so that's one thing that was wrong. And then this also should have a default child and the container to configure should have this default child and the default child should be container. And at some point uh, At some point, there might be other configurations, so that's why I'm keeping the containers a separate route. So maybe you would have this might turn into tabs or something like that, uh, where you would configure the daily goal under a tab and the containers under a different thing. So let's configure and then container. Let's get probably container list. list. <clears throat> hey, there we go. So now we've got our list here and the first thing that we want to do probably is make that a little nicer. Uh, it's not too bad right now, but I would like it to be just a little nicer before we... So what I, what I really want to do is make these, this editable. And you know, so maybe like a on each row, like a pencil icon up here or something like that. And for now, I'll just say like an edit button. But uh, so let's uh, make it. Let's see. Sometimes I like to look at the material design example. It's a good way to make sure that what you're making is pretty standard. So we've got a card and so that might be a bit much. Title, volume, that's maybe you'd have a title In your picture here. Mm, seems like a bit overkill, but let's go with let's make a card. See if we can uh, See if we can get any more mileage from this card. And if I remember right, the card has a slot named body. And so we would need like so.
like that. And then a nice should have a nice little card thing here. Hmm. Well, maybe this would be a card, and then this would be things inside the card. That actually might make more sense. Let's go like this. And then, I believe this was header. So maybe like containers. Like that. And then I've got containers. That's a bit much. Let's just make it a P for now. And then that's alright. What's this one? Why is it so nice? Oh, just text. Okay. We'll just do that. Keep it consistent. Right, and then we need some sort of spacing here. Uh, so let's put that down here, probably. What if I just <laughs> do that? That's fine for now. Um, OK, so now we've got containers. And a card. That's probably right. But then I feel like we would want. Let's say. What's the style here? The body has this padding on it so we could use negative margins or something to put lines there the other way might be to put like a title up here containers and then the name would be in this header and maybe a edit button or icon over here and then this area would be the picture or something like that. Let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. So this would be like maybe containers. And then kind of, I guess we don't actually need this to be a um, ordered list. Say header. Oops, and then in here, uh, maybe something like this. Something like that. It doesn't look too bad as a starting point. What if we said something like what if we put the volume up here? So if you have, so what I was trying to do here is distinguish these two a bit better. And you can do that with you know, uh, font face or color or whatever. You can use things like, um, you know, maybe make this white or something like that. I'm just going to, for now, And just say 24 um, out 
nonsense. And then when the body is then where this image would go, um, let's see. So what we'll want to do at some point is figure out how to save images. For now, what if we just had these all? What if we just had, like, throw this in here? Okay, so we'll go in our API, get container list. And then here, we should be able to reference it. Let's try, I guess. We should be able to reference it with asset slash by 512 yeah so then should be able to do something like this for now and then uh, over here then we can say like if there's a container dot image then and then uh, yeah so now we've got our image and obviously that looks horrible so let's go ahead and do some magic here. Let's call this a, a um, image wrapper. Actually, we shouldn't even need to do that. We should just be able to set this image uh, width. I believe. So now you've got your um, container picture there. Now there's probably a better way to do this since you'll probably have a good handful of containers. So, you know, if you force them to be square or something to look nice and maybe like in the dashboard when you add some, you want that to be kind of small. And this would be kind of strange for this to be so big, so I'm thinking maybe changing this UI, but for now, let's say, let's set a max width and then let's set a max height to um, say like 5RM or something small. just to keep it tidy for now, and then we'll think of how to shuffle this around. Might ditch this card as well, not sure. Okay, so now we want to be able to edit it though, and if we want to edit it, then we need something down here that's like a link, but a link that looks like a button. But in terms of accessibility, you definitely, since it's a, a link and the link would go to essentially an, a page in here then you want uh, you want this to be a link and so you would want to say first of all we need this and then here we'll say so this is the abstract state router it creates a um, 
any of these routes, for example, this one here, I added a state. So inside of this route, it adds the property ASR. And so you can look at the be my other computer but um, so you can look down here and there's a make path so go to the route and then parameters so here we're gonna say where we want to go is at dot let's go edit let's make a route and then uh, we'll say the ID is the container ID. Now, I'm guessing I'm guessing that this is going to complain right away because I don't have that route. And abstract state router router uh, will tell you. Uh, it will uh, maybe not close the. Oh, you're right. There. Um, it won't. It won't let you make a link to a state that doesn't exist. So we actually need to create that state. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put it in here. It'll be edit. And edit. And there we go. And then, so for example, Edit, edit, and then we'll want the. Oh, I see. Edit. But we'll want the container ID, which I made as ID here. So that's the parameter that you pass in. And template is edit and we don't need the container list but uh, we might need to load the container I'm just gonna do that for now and then oops that's our route and now we should have this link and so the route changed edit and then container one being the ID but you'll see here it doesn't have a target and what that means is inside this configure then you see this UI view and the UI view is what tells the abstract state router to embed this container view inside of it. So we essentially just need that here too. And the question is, where should it exist? So right now the way we have it is when you go to this uh, configure page, it lists the containers. And since it's embedded here, if I put it here, the sort of required place at the moment would be to put it here except that you can't put it there because you'll have uh, a UI view um, component for each container so you don't really want to do that uh, actually I think that is an error anyway Let's go, let's go see if it complains. 
It does not comport here. Hmm. Interesting. Well, still, I think if you had multiple of them, then when you click it, it will uh, show up in all of them. And we could try that. If we. like this. Maybe this is like a glass cup and it's got, you know, 10 ounces probably. So I'll say one and example container two. And so now it'll show two of them. So then now here we're at our container list view and we've got our two containers and so then if we edit the container ooh, interesting but it won't let me open this one anyway so it seems like it actually just grabs the very first UI view that's not really what we want either so I'm actually gonna leave those two example ones in there for now so the other part of this would be that if you say put the UI view just below the header then if you scroll down very far and then you hit edit then if you put it up here then you'll have to scroll all the way back to the top and that's not a great uh, user experience either. Hmm. You could have uh, modal, I suppose, where when you click it, then a, a modal pops up and lets you edit things. That's not really great. Um, what would be really nice is to be able to edit it in place. So maybe when you hit edit, you know, like say a pencil icon, then this text becomes editable, looks editable, and the volume does too. That would be really nice. Let's see, if we did that, then we wouldn't actually have an edit uh, child view. We would just change this template here. Hmm. I feel like that's the right way to do it. So I th think I think I'll stop for now and sleep on it. I think the right way is going to be that when you have this row, it's going to be a lot more compact. So maybe like the name, the volume next to it, and the picture, like a edit button or something like that. And then when you edit it, you can kind of edit in place, but I don't know. I'll have to think about it. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you later.